wow. Like to see this program with this many people. I may revert to dancing on the tables or sitting in the front. Are y'all doing great today? Great, great, great information. How many people have seen me speak before? How many people have never seen me speak? How many people have either seen me speak or not seen me speak, but just don't like raising their hands? <laughs> okay, so that is the topic. Whoa. Merging search and psychographics, gorgeous retargeting. There's a blog post of the same name. I'm on a traveling jag right now. Like it's actually more, it's more like 140,000 miles at this time in the year, which is crazy for me. But I just wanna say that out of all the places I go in the whole world, SMX Advanced and this room and these people and you, I consider this like my home community. And this is brand new material for me at a conference. Are you taking videos of this? Hold on. I believe it violates terms of services, but hey, let me give you my good side. There's a blog post called Gorgeous Retargeting Filters, Merging Search and Psychographics that represents the piece we put out on this, but better than that, we've been making a meal of it for quite some time at Clear. When I say gorgeous, I mean gorgeous. This is like candy or chocolate or northern lights or riding in a gondola type boat in Balboa Harbor is what it's like. That's Reykjavik, Iceland. Gorgeous. We're not really going to talk about marketing here today. We're going to look at my travel pictures. How does that work for you? Yes? No? Um, it all started a couple of years ago. Like This blog post was in June of 2012. And I tried to talk about this in public. I tried, but it was a little complicated. And it was kind of before remarketing was mainstream. And I traveled around talking about retargeting and filtered psychographics. And be careful that my mic's not too loud so I don't gross anybody out with my wind. And I was publishing all these fancy charts. So if you drive them in with LinkedIn or Facebook or StumbleUpon or Reddit, and then there's retargeting layers underneath, and then you keep track of the data hops. And I tried to write about it, and I wrote like 6,000 word blog posts that were like 19 pages and shit. And nobody really understood it, but I kind of did. It seemed important to me, because it became apparent in 2012 that the search engines could give us a lot more to work with than they were willing to, and if we understand how to skirt their imposed limitations, we can make a lot more money. And the more I talked about it, the more I had no idea how to talk about it, and it got so confusing. And then, was anybody at MozCon in 2012? Was anybody there? Like, I talked for an hour in a keynote-style presentation to like 800 people, and they're all sitting there going, and Rand Fishkin, that's Rand, came out on the stage and said something like, I sense that you're talking about something important and I really want to understand. And then we talked about it for a while and people seemed to understand and Rand did a great job. And I went back and I sat under the soundboard with my fingers in my mouth in the fetal position, like almost crying for an hour because I was so upset. And then for the next two years, people called me up and said, I made a million dollars, Marty, and that one changed my life. So I knew there was something there. Because it's pretty basic. Here's the fundamental, ready? If you're gonna retarget people that come to your website, and you're selling, say, an e-commerce thing, do you wanna retarget everyone, or do you wanna filter out the ones who have bad credit? Or do you wanna filter in the ones that tend to buy luxury automobiles, or Dun & Bradstreet data says that they have the word procurement in their title? So the basic concept here is filtered retargeting, and how to think of it in a programmatic way to build lists of real personas, Shortly afterwards, remarketing really became mainstream, and what remarketing is, is it's filtered retargeting within the Google system. Y'all with me? One thing I love about SMX Advanced is it has the word advanced in it, so we don't teach to the middle of the class here, so hold on. So the marketing funnel, it's not really a funnel, it's more like a bomb. <laughs> it's more like a bomb, but I know this, understanding retargeting and filtered retargeting and understanding how to match search and psychographics together to build actual personas and curated lists that are brand assets. That is your new job description. Been saying that about a lot of things for years, but if you're a marketing strategist and you don't know this, then you're gonna get beat by somebody else. It's awesome to be a marketer here. Everybody will we're almost at the limits of what the search engines will give us because if they could take, say, the 3,000 categories you could target by psychographics and Google Display Network and only run AdWords to those people the first time, you wouldn't have to spend quite so much money on AdWords, would you? 
right? They, how many people here qualify AdWords campaigns on the first targeting hop, which means the first time you target people by IRS income qualifications? Did you know you can do that? I'd like to see that with all 3,000 categories in GDM. Targeting is explicit. If you're targeting somebody for a mortgage, you can target them based on when they pulled their adjustable rate mortgage, how long it lasts for, the interest rate, when it lapses, and then throw some Experian credit in there for good measure. Like, targeting is no longer the issue. All, practically all the data on the internet is for sale by somebody. So if you don't know how to use that data, you just don't know how to use it. But for me, I'm going, pretty soon everybody's gonna have the same data. So. Um, distribution is ubiquitous. Every site's an exchange, or many sites are an exchange. So if targeting is, if tar targeting is explicit and distribution is ubiquitous, then targeting and distribution are no longer the problem. And how we use it and match them together for additional hops, the first and second targeting hop, I'm going to make the case for you today that you should think about retargeting as the second data hop and you should track it. Following is omnipresent, it's everywhere. So if targeting is explicit, I'm gonna take my first bath. If targeting is explicit, and distribution is ubiquitous, and following is omnipresent, and everybody can do it, and everyone's got the same data, and everybody's got the same distribution, and everybody can target, uh, marketing is largely about creative and keeping track of data. Enter psychographics. Um, I'm gonna, that's a pretty buzzy word, like we can all go bzz, bzz, bzz. That's an excuse for me to drink coffee. That is a melting pink brain popsicle. <laughs> a melting pink brain popsicle. Ever feel like that as a marketer? Melting pink psychographics. We've all been working with Facebook ads for years. So what does it mean that I like recycling and I like MacBook Air or I like coaching my kids in soccer and I like Israel? Um, psychographics means that I can sell minivans to pregnant couples and orth orthodontic adhesive to dentists that have a small practice and live in a certain size city and have certain income. Um, psychographics means I can sell chapstick, chapstick to ski instructors. Uh, psychographics are huge. Well, here's what they are. Interest, affinities, proclivities, peccadillos, biases, politics, relationships, weird things, <laughs> things that you write, companies that you like, yours, mine, and others. Uh, um, psychographic targeting is what makes a whole person a whole person. Tastes, inclinations, uh, medical conditions. If you're in pharma, you can literally market to people who have concerns. One of my favorite was, well, I shouldn't say it because it's not tasteful, never mind. If you don't have psychographics, then you can't sell Mortal Kombat to people who like Charles Manson or killing interests. Without psychographics, we could not sell pedicures to angry people or doggy spas. The granny's got it all going on in that picture right there. That's what psychographics are. And if you're a PR person without psychographics, you couldn't cure. Ready? <laughs> If you're, if you're not into psychographics, but you are into PR, then you don't know that you can target every morning show host who works for a major or a fringe network, or every columnist, or every assignment editor, or every deputy editor, or managing editor, or in Australia, that you can find the legislative correspondences, or newspaper correspondence. That's what psychographics are. So when I talk about driving people into a website with psychographics, I'm talking about their job or where they work, or what their education is. Or if I'm selling woodworking videos, I'm talking about people who own a home, they have a home improvement predilection for a store they like to go to, they make $125,000 of income, and they're into scroll work, and I can do all that just inside of Facebook, and I can put them on my page. So if we're gonna talk about data hops, where we enter people into the system by psychographics, I just wanna take a minute and break out what that is. One last piece, psychographics are about life transitions as well. Um, almost every product can trace success selling back to something that happens in their life. The big one, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Right, everybody goes batshit selling things at Christmas time, right? Or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa. Uh, but there's many other human life passages. We first became aware of thinking about life passages as a key psychographic event when a client in Sweden said, there's really bad laws in Sweden if you break your cell phone contract, you have to pay a lot. So what we do is we target people in every other country by psychographics that's planning on immigrating to Sweden 
because that resets the clock. Right, immigration is a really powerful signal for selling some things. Here's the main ones. These are the main ones. Can anybody think of any other ones that might affect their product? No. Someone's crying, my lord, come by. Never mind. So now let's go to retargeting. The next element of this search merge with psychographic puzzle. Everyone here knows the pixel as the targeting metaphor piece. Companies like AdRoll, AdRoll is a targeting appliance. The targeting is the pixel. The metaphor is where it was on your site. AdRoll is a targeting appliance. Great product, really fun, easy to use. Don't have any affiliation with them, I use them like everybody else. But it's kind of dumb too, if you have scale, because it's wide open. You target everyone. You all know retargeting, the user comes to your site, they leave and don't convert, they go to another website, and they get segmented creative. They get the very next piece, right? So you all know about retargeting. And there's classic metaphors for where we pull on that pixel. There's product, I call it catalog retargeting, where you put pixels at the product level, and then when so, you know, you're searching for the sauna, and you, you find a website that's content about sauna or a landing page, and you don't convert, and you're in Yahoo or something, and you see plans for a sauna kit. Product retargeting looks like that. It's pretty powerful. It cleans up the garbage. We all use it. Process targeting, that's where they get to a certain stage in the funnel, don't do the dastardly deed, and then you follow them with a sweetened offer. Again, segmented creative is very important there. You don't just give them the same dumb thing that didn't convert them the first time, you go, here's what's next, sweetened offer, bundled packages, whatever. And you all understand about Google remarketing, which is a heck of a lot smarter, where you can retarget people based on all the site visitors or, or specific pages or completed a conversion goal, and then the big magic one, Google Analytics segments. Behavioral, behavioral retargeting. So we're setting the table here. And that's in Google, that is filtered retargeting. Google remarketing is filtered retargeting by analytics data and GDN. And GDN is pretty darn psychographic these days. But what's really exciting is that the kind of targeting that we've come to expect from Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or GDN is now internet wide. And if you don't know these data services and what type of inventories they have, then it'll be harder for you to work coming up because this is Facebook ads like targeting everywhere on the internet by way of DMPs, digital media platforms, and you can push it every, most everywhere on the internet, including into FBX. Facebook isn't always the best ads platform to push data into Facebook now. You can sometimes get around reach and sometimes get around editorial and often use data that is more explicit for your client using these services. And some of them are even partnered inside of Facebook, which is interesting. So here's the deal. The whole world of marketing is once again list building where you drive people into your sites with search, with, with merged psychographic and search list. This is my first time I've ever done this presentation, so please excuse me, excuse me. Um, uh, the whole concept of having a list where I know what they searched for and I know these intimate things about them, that is a valuable asset. Curated, merged, search and psychographic list. I like the blue one, yummy in my tummy, in clear blue, mmm, yummy cupcakes in Sydney. So when we look at marketing systems, the questions have suddenly become a lot more zoomed out and a lot easier to handle. Like, the questions are easy. Are we getting enough sales? Raise your hand if your concern is not getting enough sales. Right, it's our job to ship buckets of money to somebody at the end of the day. And you have to zoom out and ask the most important questions. Are we building real personas? Who's coming into the website? How are we introducing new users into the marketing system? And about half the time we look at marketing systems and they're not introducing new people in meaningful ways into the system. That's the top of the funnel. That's the qualifying the users part or the pre-qualifying the users part. So let's talk about bringing search into the funnel first. We get them with search ads. You get search into the system to cookie them with AdWords, Bing, 
But then there's third party data, commonly known as recycled search, though Chang'e may take issue with that. You know, if you type search in the box anywhere, that's search. But just remember that search sometimes means buying other people's search and targeting people in the display, net, in display, right, in display. Um, and then there's organic search keywords that are visible or inferred. You know, if I have one page and it's massive for one keyword, I, I could take that page as a metaphor for the keyword, maybe. And also, don't forget internal site search. There's search that you own aside from AdWords. So search, I know you're with me. So this is how you introduce um, psychographics. A few of the ways are the ways that we do it every day. Facebook ads platform targeting Facebook network users. That's psychographics, right? That's interesting because you could use partner data from Epsilon, Axiom, and Data Logics mashed up with Facebook ads. Uh, GDM and YouTube targeting Google users, driving psychographics into your site. Twitter ads targeting Twitter users. Then digital media platforms, DMPs pushing third party data from those 30 companies or so into FBX or into Twitter. DMPs pushing third party data everywhere on the internet. And also, direct highly targeted banner placements on niche sites. That home, you know, when I buy banner ads on the social pages of Marketing Land, I consider that occupational psychographics. That's a damn good signal right there. So now let's talk about when this search and psychographic traffic, it just makes me want to vomit every time I say psychographic traffic. How can I say it? Psychographic visitors. Psychographic visitors. OK, solved. And SMX advanced. So let's talk about how today, when you leave here, when you go do something else, you can go do do-it-yourself lists that merge both search and social. You want to know? You guys want to know? Everybody say yes. Give me some sign that your fried chicken is digesting. Yes! Wouldn't want to be in this room in about 90 minutes. Oh, just kidding. I would, actually. That was a joke. It was a silly joke. So let's talk about the second targeting hop. Retargeting, as most of us know, it is a wide open affair, which by the way, if you have no scale, if hardly anybody comes to your site, then filtering retargeting is just going to result in no users to retarget. So you have to have some scale or you have to have a list that has been built over some time. But let's start thinking about retargeting as the second targeting hop that's either untargeted or filtered, right? So the, this is how you retarget filtered by psychographics in the second hop. Think about driving a user in from search for your money keywords and then retargeting them filtered. How many people here use Facebook custom audiences? That's where the money is on Facebook right now. You take users that, how many people here use AdWorld to target into FBX? Stop that. No, don't stop that, but if you have any scale at all, you could use Facebook's native retargeting pixel by way of custom audiences and then filter it by Facebook and partner data, especially the economic qualifications inside of Facebook. So that one about money, I said, lives right inside of Facebook. When we take over a new client, we just put a Facebook pixel on everything now. And the inside of the industry, I believe, believes that that's the biggest money tactic on Facebook. Um, Facebook negative retargeting, Facebook use, oh right, you could use either Facebook data or third party data inside of Facebook, Epsilon, Axiom, etc. Um, DMP, that would be the trade desk, Blue Kai, etc, etc. DMP retargeting internet wide using that DMP's data. If you use Blue Kai to retarget, you could use Blue Kai data from Blue Kai network users, anywhere those networks, go, that people go on the internet. DMP retargeting internet wide using third party data. Trade Desk or Blue Kai have partnerships with the other data companies and you can retarget internet wide filtered. But it's so incestuous, it's really incestuous. And then of course Google remarketing, which is the easy one for you to do. Look, make your, tar make your pixel setting metaphor inside of Google. When, when, you drive, when you drive people to your website and you set your remarketing strategy, don't just make it be about where they were in the site, make it about where they come from. And then, this is unbelievably powerful. I can't believe that more people don't do this. If you have any scale, it's just dead eye. Like, I can drive somebody in from their job, or in, they intend to buy a certain product, any number of different targeting hacks from psychographics, and I can put them on my site, 
set a Google remarketing cookie, or however the metaphor is, and then I can run AdWords campaigns just to them. Let's try that on precise for a minute. I drive someone in because of their job, or it's some highly personal thing, or that they intend to buy a certain product, and then I run an AdWords campaign just to them. You know what that is? Filtered retargeting. And it's dead eye. Like, why wouldn't we do that? Because what that means is if you retarget psychographic funnel entries with search campaigns, you could use a broader keyword set because you know who and what they are. But here's the magic, ready? This is the takeaway. Don't just send them into their site and leave them alone. Build a list of the merged ones. So I drive them in from psychographics. I set a Google remarketing pixel. I run an AdWords campaign to them. And I make a new list of the people. And then what I'm doing is I'm slowly building a list that I curate as a brand asset for marketing purposes. Um, yeah, you're following that? It's freaking huge. It's so huge. And by the way, Google could easily make it so we have psychographics and search on the same first hop. Why do you think they make us do remarketing to stack the targeting attributes when they could give us technology that just lets us do it all at once? So we wouldn't have to buy as much AdWords. <sighs> Way. Like we're at the limitations of what the search engines are going to give us, and we measure what they give us by how little they give us to preserve their revenue streams. This is obvious. It's really obvious. So if you don't retarget psychographic entry by search, that's crazy. It's just crazy. So now here's the here's the marketing bomb. I didn't need it to be a bomb, but I just kind of drew it the way it was. I had someone draw it, I gave the artist, and they came back and went, it's a blog, Marty. So you have search and psychographics coming down into the marketing system, and then they percolate where you stir it up and make lists from search and psychographics. Here's the combinations right here. It's kind of mental, really. Like, I'm so glad I'm going to retire soon. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's getting so cool. Anyway, um, you could take psychographics and retarget and filter it by search. That's RSLA. You could take search and retarget it by psychographics. That's where you take the AdWords keywords, drive them into the system, cookie them, and follow them with Facebook native retargeting or remarketing, all the things, ways I said to retarget with psychographics. You could drive search in and you could run AdWords campaigns to those people, so filter search by search. Or you could filter psychographics by psychographics and continue to add it. If you're Amazon or eBay or a massive company, then this is crazy ass stuff because you've got scale. If you're a smaller company, then you have to do this strategically or build lists over time. And the key to all of this is tracking the data hops. If you drive someone in from search and you follow up with psychographics and Facebook, then they come back to your site. That cookie, that list you set right there is priceless because maybe you narrow it down to 5,000 people out of a 40 or 50,000 person audience, but you own that list for 500 days and you can follow them until you prove that you can sell them your product or not. So think about those lists as incredibly valuable real estate. Ironically, marketing is about list building really about this building, that's especially powerful when you think that you can drive people in from email lists inside of Facebook with custom audiences, or retarget your email traffic by psychographics or run special AdWords campaigns to your email traffic. That's wild. I just used a picture of a gerbil for the hell of it because I thought it would be fun to have a cool picture right now at this point in the presentation. <laughs> laugh, laugh. And just remember that these techniques do not remove the need to do top of the funnel testing. It's all about testing at the top first, because my first choice is to sell from that first hop. I don't care about list building if I can just sell you my shit now. Source testing is still fundamental. Make like you're gonna sell with the first data hop and then use the rest to get more. And also, don't just use the same creative over and over. Use segmented creative, so each hop is the next most logical thing that you would say to somebody. <laughs> Scale matters. Anybody know what building that is? Who knows? That's that magnificent church in Iceland that I took that picture from the top of. 
And in the words of Glengarry Glenn Ross, A, B, freaking C, always be closing. This is about selling. It's our job to ship people a bucket of money at the end of the day. And it is safe to say that anybody who calls themselves out and hangs a shingle as a marketing strategist really needs to be aware of these issues and these possibilities. Um, so if you email me, marty at gameclear.com, I'll put you on the super secret psychographic social distribution weekly tip sheet. We send out 240 characters. We will never sell to you. And I, I just like to establish an email relationship with anybody that wants to be buds. I um, mean, we won't, we don't use, it's not a sales list, and I won't target you. <laughs> I promise I won't target you. And with that, I just want to say that you guys are the most beautiful marketers in the world, and I love you. So thank you for having me here today.